Hey Scorpio, this is your reading for the next six months. So this goes from July until New Year's of 2020. I've picked one card for each month and then I've picked two clarifying cards for each month. So for July we have the Tower, the Magician, and the Six of Cups. Whenever I say the Tower, I usually think it's something bad. But because you have the magician paired with this, I'm thinking that this is something that you've actually been trying to manifest or make happen. So the tower is something crumbling because it wasn't on firm ground, or it could be something like an epiphany. But I think with this, it has something to do with somebody from your past because you got the six of cups also, which is a card of nostalgia, and I just look at it as you know, like the ex coming back card. It doesn't have to be an ex. It could be anybody from your past that you've been wanting to re-enter your life because you're manifesting with a magician's power. But when this person comes back, which should be, it might have already happened or it should happen at some point in July, it's going to be something that's really kind of life-changing or something that has a really big impact on your life with the tower card. So I have to say that it must be something good because it's something that you requested or tried to make happen, unless it's something like, be careful of what you wish for because you might get it. Sorry, the dogs just ran outside. Um, so yeah, I see July as a month of some sort of a big change happening in your life. You know, maybe you're going to be reconciling with an ex and that's going to cause you to change everything. You know, you might have to move or just start a life with somebody else can be something totally new and different. If it is to do with somebody from your past, it could be that the old way of being is crumbling to the ground like your old habits with that person and you guys are going to be starting brand new because the next card that we have for August is the world this is the card of completion of cycles it is also the card of endings so it's always like a positive so I, I guess I'm trying to say that I see that something that the tower is tearing down is actually going to be a good ending for you because it's wrapping something up. And you also got the Ten of Pentacles to clarify that. The Ten and the World, any Tens and the World card, they're both cards of completion. So the Ten of Pentacles is a really great card. It's a card of uh, abundance. It's a card of having a complete family, feeling emotionally fulfilled. It's also the legacy card. It's like you have so much wealth that you have enough, not just for yourself, but also to pass along to future generations. The other card that clarified the world is the Wheel of Fortune. And this is always a good omen. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is like, can be divine timing, but it's also something happening like a good luck card. So the wheel's turning in your favor, meaning whatever you've been struggling with is going to take a turn for the better. And there's nothing for you to do. It's, it's really kind of like fate and destiny or karma. So... This world cycle is the world and the Wheel of Fortune. These are both major arcana cards, which are not cards of advice or doing anything. They're just, if you want to look at it like the universe or divine intervention, taking a hand in your life, it's okay. Um, <laughs> with this situation of an ending... I'm wondering if maybe you're going to be getting some sort of an inheritance or it could be any kind of uh, large sum of money coming in with Wheel of Fortune. 
because like I said, that's the good luck card. Then for September, we have the Five of Swords. And this is a card of typically a hollow victory with something. I was trying to pinpoint what this could possibly be referring to, and I got the Judgment card. Judgment is all about second chances and resurrection, like rising from the ashes. Almost like you're about to begin anew. And then we got the Knight of Wands. And this is somebody who comes in very quickly, but they also leave very quickly. They're not a stable person or a committed person. They're a person who follows their passions and... They're there for a good time, but not a long time. So I'm wondering if somebody, whoever in your life could be represented by the Knight of Wands, like this could be a player person, playboy or playgirl, is trying to come back into your life for a second chance. And you're like, thanks, but no thanks. And you kind of run them off. It, that's the impression that I'm getting from this card is like you kind of run somebody off. And you're waving your sword in the air like, don't come back or I'll, I will cut you. <laughs> so September might have somebody returning from your past also, but not in a good way, not in a way that you're willing to be receptive to. Um, and I don't really see you having much patience for this person. You've kind of, in this sense, made your judgment about them and you've decided that it's not somebody that you really want to keep in your life. So you just kind of set them on their way. In October, we got the Seven of Wands card. This is typically the card of being defensive and blocking, but this card, this version of the card, which is from the After Tarot, is more reminiscent to me of the Five of Wands. So it's almost like, it looks like there's a riot going on. So there's going to be a some sort of upheaval in October. And I kind of see you in this card rising above the rest. What is that phrase? When they go low, we go high. So I think this is telling you that with it being a group setting, I'm wondering, it could be either like a family situation, could be in the workplace, or some other kind of community situation where there's a lot of dissension. And you're just like, I'm going to rise above this. I'm not going to, you know, stoop to these people's level and deal with their crap. And that's further exemplified by the Queen of Wands card. It's like you're stepping into your Queen of Wands energy. And the Queen of Wands is somebody who's very uh, confident. She's usually somebody who's very attractive, charming. She's a head turner. She's very passionate and creative. And I think like all the queens, she, in this situation, is very quick to rise above, you know, any kind of pettiness. Then you got the Eight of Pentacles card. And this is the card of working hard, um, perfecting your craft, being an apprentice, or just being diligent about something. So I think what I see in this scenario is that you're kind of, as a way of saying, not my circus, not my monkeys, and I'm not going to lower myself to become entrenched in this. I'm just going to do me. I'm going to work over here by myself where it's quiet and peaceful and kind of turn my back on everybody else because you don't want to be dragged into the middle of the melee, if that makes any sense. We've got the Wheel of Fortune popping up again for you in November, which, like I said, is always a great thing. So whatever the uh, stress and strife was in October, I see things really calming down for you and going your way, so to speak. Again, you're stepping into your queen energy, and this time you're the queen of swords. The queen of swords is somebody who is very blunt and honest. She is not going to worry about sugarcoating anything. And she's also quick to cut out people from her life who are not for her best. 
So she's very much a queen of independence and, <clears throat> excuse me, self-care. She's not one that you have to worry about um, being used as a doormat. She's going to stand up for herself. When I clarified that, I got the Eight of Swords. And in this particular card, which is the Before Tarot, it almost looks like somebody is trying to oppress you in some way. The Eight of Swords is typically about uh, being in a mental prison of your own making and one that you can leave at any time. But you can see this woman in this card is very bound. She can't see. She's all tied up. And somebody's actually like pushing her into this prison of swords. So what I see here is, is you saying, you know what, I'm not going to be held down. I'm not going to be oppressed. I'm going to step into my own power, get myself out of whatever this situation is where somebody's trying to make me do something that I don't want to do or that I don't feel comfortable with. Or maybe it's just somebody that's really stressing you out and you just feel like you don't want to stay in that mental space with them because it's just too anxiety provoking to you. So you're like, sorry, you know, you got to go. And it's going to end up making things a lot better for you with the Wheel of Fortune in November. In December, I see that there's some sort of justice coming your way. This is typically a card of you getting what you deserve. It could be, you know, karmically what you deserve, or it could be, you know, in the physical world, like let's say that somebody owes you money or some sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? It's escaping me right now. But basically, you're, you're getting what you feel is owed to you or what you're worth in a situation. And it may require you walking away to bring about this justice. You know, sometimes we have to just put our foot down and say, I'm not going to accept anything less than what I deserve. And that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting off of these two cards together. But justice could also be a, an apology, and that might be exactly what it is because you also got the Page of Cups. And the Page of Cups is bringing some sort of an offer, and I usually think of the Page of Cups as either bringing love or an apology. So it could be that you are getting, you know, a, a real apology from somebody, a genuine apology. Somebody's finally seen the light, and they realize that maybe you actually were correct about a situation that for however long they've been saying that you were not right about. And you knew all along that you were right and you were just waiting for other people to realize it. So when, once you walk away from the situation, it's going to be kind of like a wake-up call for these people or this person, and you will be getting some sort of an apology, I think. It could also be, you know, it, other things in addition to an apology or instead of an apology... But either way, you're going to get what's coming to you, and it's going to be something that you feel really good about, like you feel like justice is served in this situation in December. So yeah, it looks like it's going to be kind of an exciting six months for you, Scorpio, um, with a lot of twists and turns here and there. But I think that everything is going to ultimately work out in your favor by the end of the year. Thank you for watching.